Hello, third grade artists. Today we are going to continue with our um, folk art landscape inspired by the artist Heather Galler. And you can see here I've changed my work a lot since last week. Um, so last week we ended and it looked a little bit like this. Um, and today we're going to add some details to our geometric shapes and we're going to add some patterns um, to our land and maybe our sun and maybe the sky and maybe uh, our trees and our water if we have it. And you just learned about the principle of design pattern by watching um, a video and you took a look at Heather Galler's work and you looked at the patterns in her work and so we're going to um, start doing some of that today. So the first thing you're going to want to do is add some details to your geometric shapes on your horizon line and you can just use a black crayon for this or you can use a black marker. Here's how I ended last week. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to think, okay, I want this to be a barn, so not a house, because there's my silo. So I might add a pattern to my silo. And um, I'm going to do this part in marker, but you could always do it in color too, color crayons. So I'm going to add my door and I'm going to my barn. I'm going to add the X on it. Barn doors frequently have that. And maybe I'll add a window over here that's closed. Maybe it's open later. And maybe up here I'll add a hayloft door. Okay, so there's my are the details on my um, building that make it look like a barn. I'm going to add some details to my tree, both to the trunk and I'm using pattern. And remember with folk art, um, it's not realistic. There are a lot of really kind of fanciful designs. I'm using this connected spiral pattern here. And then I think I will do like an all over circle pattern like it's an apple tree or something. Okay, and then for my sun, um, I'm going to start with a curved line and then maybe I'll make another curved line. And I could just keep going with those curved lines or I can add some diagonal lines and then maybe I'll do a zigzag line on it. and maybe a bumpy line to connect my zigzags and then maybe some more diagonal lines something like that to make it look like unusual okay so once that's done once you've added details then you're ready to start adding patterns to your ground and so as you can see here I chose several different patterns and I use crayons for this and so you can do kind of a diagonal line pattern. You don't have to repeat lines, you could repeat shapes like I could or circles with spirals in them. white for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Now remember if at any point I'm going too fast you can pause it and catch up and your work doesn't have to look like my work. Your work needs to look like your work. Um, maybe I want to have some horizontal lines. I could always go back in and add shapes inside my horizontal lines, like little circles. I don't have to do it every one. I could do it every other one. So 
So just making interesting patterns in your field. You can also add patterns to your sky if you'd like. Maybe over here I want to make a heart pattern. Had some of them going off. Uh, maybe over here I want there to be like a cross lines like a diamond shape pattern and I can just repeat that by making diagonal lines and then diagonal lines across. I could go back in and add um, I could go back in and I could add circles or shapes inside of them if I wanted to. So I'm adding patterns to every part of the space underneath my horizon line. If you have like a pattern like this where you know you have some water, maybe I know I want this to be sand, so maybe I add like a dotted line or dot dotted line, dotted polka dot pattern, small polka dots to make it look like sand. I could keep going with that. I could add some little dashed lines in there too. That might be a kind of a fun pattern. In my water, I know I want to keep it looking like water, so I could do some vertical lines in places. And maybe with another blue, I would do some diagonal lines that cross. And this is really up to you. It's about filling it and making it really bright and using pattern and lots of different kinds of pattern. I can also color things in, like I can color my fish in. If you added some fish to your water, if that was one of the details. Um, I could color the stripes in. Now, uh, this might take a good, a good long while for you to color everything in, so I'm going to show you some tips in case you um, want it to go a little faster. So let me go back to, oh, here's my city where I added some details to my buildings. So let me come back here. I loved how in Heather Galler's work, she frequently had like circles going on in the sky, like a dotted pattern. You could use a striped pattern in the sky, but I like how she, did, she didn't just color the sky all in one color. And you could also go in and color in some of the details on your trees, like uh, maybe I want these to be reminiscent of apples, and so I color them in red. Imagine there being an apple tree on a farm. Um, maybe I want this to be, you know, kind of every other stripe, color that in. Now, coloring in the whole thing this way could take a lot of time. And maybe you want to spend the time doing that. Maybe coloring is your jam and you really love it. Or maybe, you know, you want to come back to it so you're not all doing it all at the same time. Maybe I'm going to add some vertical stripes onto my barn. And is it okay if it's not perfect? Absolutely. Totally fine. Um, but let me show you a couple of ideas in case you want to add more color. So one thing that I can do is if like I got this all colored in, but then I want this whole field to be a color, I can take the paper off my crayon and I can use it on the side. And this is, you know, a great trick for coloring things in quickly coloring it in with the side. And the other thing that you can do is if you have um, water-based markers at home, right, you can go around the edges. This is just a Crayola marker, just a regular plain old Crayola marker. I can even 
kind of color it in. And now I know this looks like scribble coloring, but wait, I'm going to show you something magical. Then if you have a paintbrush um, and a little cup of, like a little yogurt cup of water or something, or you can even do this with a, you can do this with a Q-tip. You could wet a Q-tip and do that. And you can go over your marker and spread that color out with your brush. And so then it starts to look like watercolor. Now, if you do have watercolors at home, you could definitely do that too. Um, and maybe you even want to see what it looks like if you do that over the whole thing. Right? If you're like, oh, well, I want to see what that looks like if I go over where I already colored it in with crayon. You can experiment. And if you're worried about messing up your art, you could try it on something else first. I don't know how this is going to work. I didn't try. Usually I try things out first, friends. But I didn't try this one out. <laughs> oh, well. And then, oh, it does work. Look at that. And then I get a brighter color in there when I go over the orange marker. And you're not going to paint over your designs because it's like if you do, if you decorate eggs in the springtime, um, the crayon is waxy so it resists the water. So have fun today, friends. Um, go in, add pattern to your sky, Add details to your buildings and your trees and your sun. Um, add patterns to your fields or water below your horizon line. And then have fun experimenting with how you can make the whole thing colorful. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Have fun with this. Happy art making, friends.